Alrighty folks, so we're back with uh, part two. Um, I'm just going to run through kind of the basics of uh, setting up a, uh, a park jet with uh, six uh, servos for elevons, independent ailerons and rudders, which is a setup that I use on just about all of my planes. Uh, now just a couple of things. Uh, this this process I'm there maybe there's smarter ways of uh, doing it I don't really know I've got I've found this process ba basically by trial and error and you know just flipping switches and turning turning knobs and changing things in the menu so this is uh, you know if you've picked up one of these transmitters and you're really stuck uh, to get it set up and then you know hopefully this is one way maybe that'll that'll uh, get you where you need to go uh, so I've got a setup here I've built a, a park jet <laughs> so to speak uh, I've got a motor, uh, the uh, two servos for elevons, ailerons, and rudders. Now, just to prevent confusion, um, where the elevons are, or where the transmitter is actually, is going to be the back of the airplane. And I want my elevons to actually come back uh, like this, you know, to lift my ailerons. So we're going to pretend that the elevons and the ailerons are actually on the bottom of the plane and then the rudders are on the top of the plane which is how I set up most of my park jets and most park jets that uh, that you would build would have that set up as well so this is the back of the plane and this is the front of the plane alright so let's get uh, get right into it um, I've purposely left my my motor unplugged uh, the other thing I would strongly strongly encourage you to do is take your prop off uh, in the you know when I was playing around finding this this process uh, I had a situation at one point in time where I didn't save something properly in the uh, menu and then my motor all of a sudden just burst to life and I think it went from zero to fifty percent throttle just like that so t definitely take your uh, your prop off your motor uh, while you're doing this alright so uh, let's just get her fired up here so we powered it up I'm at my uh, my uh, home page here so to speak uh, this little um, um, graphic here just shows you how much uh, battery voltage I have. So I've built this uh, test rig. Um, I'm using, uh, you have the capability to change, as I sort of mentioned in my, um, my intro video, and uh, Andrew Newton actually demonstrates in his uh, beginner transmitter video. I'm using one of my uh, Hobby King transmitters, so I've changed the protocol in that, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. Andrew Newton does a better job of that. All right, so anytime the light goes off, uh, you just have to press the o press any button really quickly. And so we're going to press and hold the OK. All right, so we're now we're in the menu. I don't want to do anything in the system, as I mentioned. Uh, Andrew Newton does a better job than that. So one thing here that I've noticed, and I'll just talk about this briefly. Depending on the menu, uh, you're going to navigate up and down with the up and down buttons. And in other menus, you're going to navigate up and down using the OK button. And the cancel button is if you're in a menu and you you know you get all discombobulated and you don't you want to start over again, is you just press the cancel button. I'll just show you. So I press the press the cancel button real quick, and it takes me um, out of that. If you use you also use this as an enter button. So when you've got something set up the way that you want it, you're going to press and hold that, and then uh, you can also go always go back later and check to make sure that your what you set up works. But this is this has two functions. It's a sort of a exit start over and also an enter uh, button so uh, we'll go to function setup okay alright so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna we're gonna come back to the reverse uh, we'll do that uh, towards the end so here's some a uh, couple of things now I'm gonna try and show you this later on uh, you've got the two aux channels five and six which is what we're gonna put our ailerons in they're also uh, completely um, uh, manageable using switches or the uh, the two variometers up here I don't want to use up any of my switches and I actually don't want those doing anything um, other than acting as uh, ailerons in this basic setup anyway so I'm just gonna uh, click on OK aux channel so you see I've got channel 5 on variometer A channel 6 on variometer B now what I've learned again in this process is I've turned these all the way uh, clockwise oops and I'm just gonna leave them there uh, I'm not gonna play around with them and it's something that I'll double check every time to make sure that I haven't moved them okay so I'm happy with that press uh, okay so first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm not gonna worry about sub trim I'm gonna go to dual rate expo so you only can change the uh, rates and the expo in four of the channels 
Uh, you're basically, as I mentioned in the intro, you're hardwired into Aileron, Elevon, and Rudder. So here's a menu where you navigate up and down using the OK. So I'm just going to leave the rate at 100 here. Now this is a critical thing to remember with this transmitter is that if you want the stick to be less sensitive you actually use a minus in the expo. If you want it to be more sensitive you use a positive. So I want to put in, I normally fly with um, about 15 percent expo. I can't, I can't do that in this, it only goes in values of 2. So I'm just going to go down you can see the line. I'm just going to show for demonstration purposes. If I hold that and you watch this line here on the graph, it shows you how you're really flattening things out in the middle to make it uh, less sensitive here, so not as touchy. So we're going to just go back and set that at, uh, at 16. All right, so we don't need to save this just yet because we're not done in this menu. So we're going to go back up. So that was channel 1, which will be uh, aileron or the aileron portion of my Elevon, press up, now I go up to channel 2, same thing, I want to set minus 16 in that, so the slave channels, when, I, when I'm going to slave 5 and 6 to the aileron channel, they are going to take on the same uh, rate and expo as, as uh, what I'm setting up here, so I'm going to go back up, now channel 4 is my rudder, I like to fly with about 20%, uh, oops, wrong button, channel 4, navigate down and I like to fly with about 20 percent expo in my rudder alright so there I am I'm happy with that I save that now again we'll just go back in and check okay so yeah channel 1 uh, minus 16 channel 2 minus 16 channel 4 minus 20 good save that okay uh, we're gonna come we're not gonna use the throttle curve um, and we're not we'll go back to the mixes the first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna show you uh, is uh, Elevons. So click on OK. So currently my Elevon is off so I just either press up or down to change that so now it's on. I'm not going to mess around with these percentages later. I'm going to do that in the next video when when we talk about how we're going to set up uh, you know fine-tune our plane to have the throws and stuff that we want. So actually what I'll do now is I'm just going to I'll just shut that off for now. So here I'll just show you uh, how the channels work. So I'm going to have, I always have my left Elevon on my plane in channel 1, so I'm going to do the same thing there. I've got my receiver already plugged, or my uh, ESC already plugged in. I've already bound this receiver. Okay, so there's channel 1, channel 2 plugged in, so we're just going to fire that up. Oop, something's gone wrong with my... Oh, just a sec. Plug the... Uh, Plug the servo lead in incorrectly. That's a dumb rookie mistake. It's a good way also to damage a servo if you're not careful. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. That's better. Okay, so if I was in, um, if I didn't go to Elevons right now, okay, so there's there would be my aileron in channel one and my elevator in channel two. Okay, so I turn that on. Now I've got them mixed. Now I'm probably going to have to go back and, and do some reversing here. I notice when I pull back on the stick, this this uh, uh, one is going in the correct direction, this one's going in the wrong direction, but we'll change that later. Again, we're not going to change the percentage, so I'm happy with that. Cancel to save it. Now we'll go up to Mix, and we're going to uh, mix. So I'm going to plug in the rest of my servos now. So I'm running my rudders on a Y harness, which is the same thing that I do in any of my other planes anyway so that goes into channel 4 and this one is channel 5 make sure I've got the color wires oriented correctly okay so you notice that this has kicked all the way to one side now this is something I again I learned by trial and error we're gonna fix that in the uh, in the mix oops missed a, missed a spot here making all these rookie mistakes. <laughs> that Elevon, other aileron is not going to work when it's plugged into the bind plug port. <laughs> all right, there we go. Okay, so you see that they've kicked, uh, you know, pretty far over to one side. Okay, so we're in mix one. Uh, so again, we navigate down using the OK button. So I want to turn it on. 
and I've got channel 1, this one, which is the aileron channel. We're going to slave 5 and 6 to this so that it acts like they act like ailerons. And now to for my slave for 5, I go up. Whoops, go up silly. So now I've got 5, navigate down again. I'm just going to leave these uh, positive and negative mixes until the next video and when we start to find, show how we're going to fine tune it on an actual plane. Now this offset here, this is where I found, again, just by trial and error, how to fix these, uh, these two. So I'm going to set a value, and if you watch as I do this, you can see that aileron, you can only go down to minus 50 anyway. All right, so there we go. So now if we work our stick, okay, so that's going now in the same direction as Elevon 1, but again, we're going to, we have an aileron, so when I go, to go like up and down in my elevator, it's only acting as an aileron, which is what I want. Okay, so uh, we'll navigate up again because we're not done in this, whoops, we're not done in this menu. Okay, so now we're going to go to mix 2. Okay, so mix 2 is off. We're going to turn it on. Whoops. And now the slave is going to be 6, this one up here. Up, silly. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's good. Okay, and again, we leave the positive and negative mix alone for now. We'll change those when we do the, uh, the setup in the plane. And again, uh, we'll go to minus 50, and again, you can see the, the tongue depressor moving there. Okay, so there we go. So there we go. So aileron, my aileron servos are moving like ailerons. They're not moving in the pitch, so that's exactly what I want. Oops. A bad servo there. Okay, so we're done with this menu. Press and hold cancel. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I want to set a safety switch so that when I, uh, you know, I have my plane uh, plugged in, if I bump my throttle, my motor's not going to go. So I'm just going to um, plug the motor in. Okay. All right, so it's active now. I don't. Okay, so the motor is active. So I'm going to go down to, oops, <laughs> uh, and navigate properly here, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go to throttle hold first. All right, so currently it's off. So again, we um, use these buttons to change that. So now it's on. You can see here it says not engaged. And then we go down here, and I want to set this value to zero. Okay, and now I'm going to, so I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go back up into my switch assign. And this is the menu here where you can assign your switches, um, in a, you know, sort of whatever way that you want. So for me, uh, this would be if I, if you wanted, right now I have switch D. So if you wanted to set, um, you know, high and low rates, I don't tend to fly with high and low rates. I just leave my rates the same. That would be on this switch. Probably when I do the firmware upgrade, this is where I'll put my, uh, my timer. Okay, so again, we use the OK, we navigate down, so this is switch A, so you can see when I flip the switch there, it's, I flip it down, now it would be on. Okay, so if I advance the throttle, uh, nothing happens, I flip it up, and now my motor's live, okay? So that's good, so we're going to save, and now we'll just go down and check, and you can see again here in, uh, in throttle, oops, in throttle hold, now you can see that it's, it says engaged here. If I flip the switch off, not engaged. Okay, so I'm happy with that. All right, so now let's go back up to reverse and get these uh, servos going the way we want them. So I mentioned that I wanted to have it so that when I pull back on the stick, both my elevons come back. So obviously, uh, number channel one. So here's, again, we navigate to the channel we want using OK and then select it by using the up and down. So I want to change that, reverse that. Okay, so now those are working the way that I want. Now, okay, though, so that would be a left hand turn pushing my elevon up, but my ailerons are uh, reversed. Oops. Okay, so I go over to channel 5, I want to reverse that, and channel 6, I want to reverse that. 
Okay, so there we go. So now my elevons and ailerons in the pitch, or in the roll, sorry, are moving the correct direction. And then I would check my, so in, in, let's in a, say in a situation, if I was making a left-hand turn and my rudder was on the top of my plane, my this should actually go forwards, and it does. Okay, but you can also reverse, um, you could also reverse that too if you needed to. I'll just show you for... So now it's going in the direction I don't want it to go in, so we'll just change it. There we go. So again, we press. Okay, so up, down, left, right, and left, right with our rudders. So we are good to go. So now once you're all done with that, you just keep, you just uh, press cancel briefly. It takes us back to our, uh, to our home page. Now, one thing... Uh, I want to talk about and it didn't do it with this motor but this was something that I found uh, really really annoying and it took me a while to uh, to figure out what the problem is so I'm just gonna unplug it I don't I doubt it's gonna do it but um, so I actually I'll demonstrate this so even if you have uh, this is something that I'm gonna have to get used to doing is because with my Turnigy 9X if I leave my throttle kill switch on which I you know you would be after you're done flying you've walked out to pick up your plane uh, for the last time and you make sure you have this engaged so that in case you bump your throttle before you unplug your battery your uh, you know your props not gonna start spinning now what happens with this transmitter one thing that's built into this transmitter is if I have any of these switches in the down position when I turn it on okay it keeps it's gonna beep all place all switches in their up position lower the throttle okay so you can the only way you can clear that is by flipping that switch up now for me because I want when I plug my plane in I want to have my throttle kill on then I'm gonna switch that back on now one thing that I found uh, I'm just gonna leave it off for now and see if the motor does it no it's okay I guess one thing that I found, and uh, maybe I'll be able to get it to do it when we do the a more advanced video, is when I first plugged the motor in, when I was setting the things up, it would it would just sit there and beep 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 beep, and it would not let me, it would not stop beeping. And again, I played around with all kinds of stuff. I found out that I had to set the throttle points so, uh, before it would stop beeping. So you know, just like any other transmitter, make sure that if you did have a throttle kill in, that you turn it uh, off advance the throttle to full, plug it in, two beeps, okay, now my motor, motor is hot. Okay, so that's a little bit of something uh, that, that's going to take me a little while to get used to. So there we go, folks. I know I, uh, I know I made a few rookie mistakes. Again, I'm just, I'm still uh, learning. It does take, uh, you know, a bit of patience to remember, um, you know, sort of what menu you're in and how you navigate up and down and how you select things. Uh, again, sometimes you're going to navigate up and down using the up and down button, and sometimes you're going to navigate up and down using the OK button. Um, remember that the cancel is, uh, you know, is is a quick way to get out of a particular menu and then come back into it to uh, to fix it. But if you don't press and hold it, it won't save what you've done. Um, so, and then you know when you first start up, you just press and hold OK, and then that'll take you to either one of these menus. There's a system menu where you know you select the model, you want to change models out of the field, uh, you select whatever model, uh, a lot of good features there. So uh, so that's it, uh, essentially uh, quick and dirty folks. Um, again, the next time we're gonna go through the more advanced setup where we'll have, you know, do the fine tuning, we'll have an actual plane and we'll fine tune to get the, uh, the control throws and the servos uh, doing exactly what we want. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Again, if you need help on the basic navigation, please watch uh, Andrew Newton's video. Uh, he does uh, an excellent job there. And uh, please don't hesitate to post your questions uh, down below. Uh, and I hope, again, that this has uh, been helpful. So thanks very much for watching. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone. Park jet noise, the other sound of freedom, baby. Take care.